all the way back in 2016, so over two years ago, Vodafone began refarming their 1800 and 2100 megahertz bands from legacy technologies over to 4G. In the case of the 1800 megahertz, this was from 2G, and in the case of 2100 megahertz, it was from 3G. And in the two years since then, both bands have been completely reformed in many areas so that only 4G operates on the 1800 and 2100 MHz. The 900 MHz band, however, has kept legacy technologies of 2G and 3G for legacy devices as well as circuit switch fallback up until this point carrying no 4G whatsoever. As of a few days or week ago, this has changed and the 900 MHz band does now house 4G for Vodafone alongside 2G and 3G as well. And in this video I will explain how they are doing that, which is quite interesting especially with the Ericsson hardware that they are using in the zones that have had the 4G 900 MHz so far because of course, like I say, they're running 2G and 3G at the same time as the 4G, so it's triple mode operation on the 900 megahertz band. First things first, let's look at Vodafone's 900 megahertz spectrum. In these diagrams, I will only be showing the downlink because that correlates with the downlink UARFCNs, ARFCNs and EARFCNs that we have. So Vodafone has six blocks of 900 megahertz spectrum, three in the uplink and three in the downlink. And previously they used the first two blocks in each direction for two 3G carriers. So the first is the standard 3G carrier of UARFCN 2938 and the second is the UARFCN 2987 secondary carrier. The third block of 900 megahertz spectrum was then used entirely for 2G services. As part of the refarm to 4G, the two 3G carriers, 2938 and 2987, swallow up the first two blocks in each direction once again, but five megahertz of the 900 megahertz spectrum in the third block in each direction is taken up for 4G services, leaving only 2.8 megahertz for 2G ones. The paired 5 MHz of LO9 produces an EARFCN of 3698 and it uses the cell sector ID pattern of X2, so 12, 22, 32 were the sector IDs that we saw. During our London trip, Jake and I saw 3 out of the 4 LO9 sites. And of the three that we saw, two of them have visible antennas, while the third is a fake chimney with the antennas hidden inside, which isn't quite so useful. The sites are very standard Vodafone O2 London affairs with two antennas per sector. One of the antennas is predominantly for O2, which in both examples is a triple band Comscope Argus and carries O2, 2G, 3G, 900, their 3G, 2100 and also 4G 1800 alongside the shared 4G 800 for Vodafone and O2. These panels are quite clearly recognisable as O2 because they've got blue tags going into them and there are also Nokia master amplifiers which gives away the Nokia vendor feeding them. The other panels are the Vodafone ones and in the upper example a dual band Catherine antenna is being used with two low ports and two high ports and on the lower example a triple band Comscope Argus but only four out of the six ports are being used and these Vodafone panels carry the 2G, 3G, 4G 900 or GUL09 alongside the 4G 2100 MHz or L21 because these have been fully refarmed as far as 2100 MHz is concerned much like how I described earlier on in the video. The schematics shown are simplified representations in some ways of what is going on and I'll speak in a lot more detail next about the way that Vodafone is doing this triple mode 900 MHz capability. The first deployment possibility that Vodafone could be using for the triple mode 900 MHz involves the use of the standard Ericsson RUS radios which are found in their RBS series of cabinets 
and these radios are each dual mode capable and have one transmit and receive port and one receive port each. A typical setup uses two of these radios per sector, which is quite important. The way they set these up to operate in a tri-mode configuration with 2C2R on the 4G 900 MHz is with the different radios doing slightly different things. So the first radio of each sector is carrying 2G and 4G on 900 MHz and the second radio is carrying the 3G and 4G on 900 MHz. So we've got 4G on two of the radios and that's how we get the 2T2R. Meanwhile there's one radio for the 2G 900MHz and one radio for the 3G 900MHz. And this way each of the radios is only carrying two technologies at the same time. And therefore it works. As could be seen from the antennas which only had two feeders for 900MHz. They are therefore only using the transmit and receive ports on each RUS as we'd expect. The second build possibility involves the use of Ericsson's RRUS, so their remote radios, specifically most likely the RRUS 12 which could be seen doing the 2100 MHz operation on those sites as well. Now the RRUS 12 can be thought of in some ways as two of the RUSs but without the receive ports on them. So it's effectively two RUSs with just the TXRX port and therefore it works in much the same way as the build with the RUSs. So one of the ports of the RRUS carries the 3G and 4G 900 MHz and the other port carries the 2G and 4G 900 MHz. So once again you get the 2T2R on the 900 MHz 4G with the 2G and 3G operation while still having the capability of two technologies per half of the remote radio. As of late, Vodafone has been deploying a lot of Ericsson radio system radios around the place, which are quite noticeable because they're quite shiny and white and quite small and very new looking. And so the possibility exists that they could be using these for the 4G 900 megahertz as well. Um, just because they're the latest radios that Ericsson provides and would therefore kind of make sense to use them. However, the fundamental operation would remain very much the same as with the RRUS 12. Thanks for watching this video about Vodafone's refarm of 900 MHz. As you can probably tell by the video at this point, it's getting rather dark because this took longer to film than I maybe expected it would. And also I apologise about the aircraft noises above, that's a slight problem with there being a bit of a flight path above me and is yet another reason why I usually film inside apart from the lighting aspect. But as it was a nice sunny day at least when I started producing this, I thought I should take advantage of it. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.